Hello everyone, my name is Halvi, and in this video, we're going to be ordering the Fire Emblem games in order from least to highest enemy count. So for this, I included the main story, guide in chapters, paralog chapters, and I only counted the initial enemies on each map, although there are a few exceptions for that that we'll get into later. I also included route splits. However, I did not include any reinforcements, and we'll go over why that is as we go through the games. I didn't include any DLC, and all this is because I just wanted to try to find a set of rules for like a fair comparison. So starting with the game with the least amount of enemies is FE1 with 470 enemies. So I don't think this is much of a surprise as it only has 25 chapters and it seems like as I was going through the chapters it seems like there is like a 20 unit uh, limit per map for like the starting initial enemies as no map had more than 20 enemy units at the start of each map. So maybe this could have just been a hardware limitation I would assume so but the thing about it is FE1 does have makes up for it with hundreds of reinforcements, especially later into the game. Some reinforcements will just go on for, you know, 50 turns or more. Like I know chapter 24, the second to last map, has like just hundreds of reinforcements in that map alone. So already you're seeing like why I didn't want to include reinforcements, because it's just not consistent across the games. Next is FE11 with 634 enemies. FE11 is just a pretty faithful remake of FE1, so that's why it's enemies so low here. Although it is more than FE1 because of the added prologue and guidance chapters. Other than that, it's mostly the same. Although I think they did like tone it down on the reinforcements in the remake. Next is FE2 with 700 enemies. Again, since it's on the same system as FE1, I think there's like a 20 enemy unit limit per map, but also the thing about FE2 is that it has no in-map reinforcements. FE2's version of reinforcements are that there's like dungeons that you can just grind in infinitely, and there are uh, like armies that will spawn on the overworld map, you know, like in certain areas like Greece Citadel will spawn uh, just an army of like some brigands like every so often and as you tur as you like move around the world map So I mean that's basically like infinite reinforcements So that's another reason why I just didn't include reinforcements at all next is fe12 with 745 enemies fe12 again like fe11 is a really faithful remake but as why this is lower than fe where fe3 was gonna be is because it doesn't include book one it only, it's only a remake of book two, and I believe they also kind of toned down reinforcements, but that's not really um, important though. Next is FE15 Echoes with 755 enemies. So it has slightly more enemies than, than the original game, FE2. Um, this is because it's uh, added the post game, uh, Act 6 and Thabe's Labyrinth. So I decided to include that, but otherwise it's very faithful to FE2. And again, like FE2, it has the dungeons and infinite reinforcements basically on like the overworld map. Next is FE8 with 846 enemies. For FE8, I decided to include both routes, uh, Aphrams and Erica's routes. However, I did not include the Tower of Valny and the Lagdal Ruins because they are kind of like dungeons which are and you can just infinitely grind enemies in there so I really didn't think it'd be fair to include that and FE8 also has skirmishes like that will appear on the overworld map so that's basically like infinite enemies as well so I didn't include any of that stuff next at number 10 is FE9 at 899 enemies FE9 might come surprising because it is a very long game however it only has 30 chapters and as far as like playable maps go that is very low in compared to other games in the series um chapter seven one thing to mention is though chapter 17 has four parts and for that i included the, the initial enemies for each part of chapter 17. next we have fe3 at 945 enemies fe3 is this high because 
of the two books and I felt like I had to include both books. So that equals out to 44 playable maps for all of FE3. Book 1 is a pretty faithful remake or remaster to FE1. However, it does cut out a few chapters and like one of the chapters is com completely like remade in the Garnef chapter. And FE3 also has a problem with a huge amount of reinforcements. I think, I don't know if it's FE3 or like FE12 where the final chapter, those earth dragons are basically infinite. Next is FE5 with 990 enemies. FE5 actually has a lot of playable maps, uh, 35 in total. There is a two chapter route split and I did include both uh, routes. FE5 also has uh, like hundreds of reinforcements that some maps there will be reinforcements for like 50 plus turns. So I did not include that. Next is FE7 with 1081 enemies. FE7 is a pretty huge game when, if you look at it in terms of playable maps. It has 46 total playable maps which include two chapters that have an A or a B uh, map. And I did include both all of the like Hector and Ellie Wood mode exclusives. FE7 doesn't really have a problem with reinforcements though. Only some some chapters, I mean, like late game, like the Limstella chapter, there's lots of reinforcements in that one, as well as Cog of Destiny has a ton of reinforcements, but I didn't include them as you know. Next is FE6 with 1137 enemies. FE6 has less playable maps than FE7. But it does still have a lot of guidance chapters. Um, I included all of the Western Isle routes and I included both the Sakai and Ilya routes. But so FE6 does have like a, a higher amount of like initial enemies on each map in general, like on average. FE6 also has a lot of reinforcements, especially in the, the very final map, I'm pretty sure those fire dragons will spawn infinitely. There's only like two or three of them each turn, but I'm pretty sure they're infinite. So that's another reason why I did not include reinforcements at all. Next, now that we're getting to the top five, at number five is FE4 with 1,162 enemies. This is the one exception I had to make for FE4 for to not just include in, uh, initial enemies. FE4 does a lot of things differently. It's a pretty, uh, you know, just the way it, it uh, plays is very different from a normal Fire Emblem game. FE4 does not have like standard reinforcements at all. Um, the way FE4 works is that you have to, the maps are very huge and you have to conquer or seize each castle one by one for each map, for each chapter. So I felt like I had to make an exception here because you kind of have to see, you have to seize every castle. And as you seize each castle, um, the next group of enemies spawn in. So this number, 1162, is basically like the total amount of enemies in the entire game since FE4 does not have your standard reinforcements at all. Actually, I just remembered that there are reinforcements in FE4. In certain circumstances, um, an enemy commander can actually return to uh, one of their castles and come out with a new fleet of like soldiers. Uh, specifically, like I know in chapter four, um, that one Pegasus Falcon Knight commander can return to the, the main castle and come out with more Pegasus Knights. Otherwise though, there really aren't any reinforcements in FE4. Next is FE13 with 1,297 enemies. Awakening is a very long game. If you do all the paralogs and all that, it has 44 playable maps. I did not include any DLC and I did not include the spot pass uh, paralogs that you can get like Gangrel, Emerin, Wallheart, Aversa, Yenfei, and Priam. I did not include any of those maps since it's not really part of the main story I would because it came out I think those came out like after uh, you know the game even released. 
Um, but otherwise, FE13 just has r kind of big maps and they're very saturated and filled out with initial enemies. Um, FE13 does have, does like its reinforcements though, and also like FE8, Awakening has skirmishes on the overworld map and basically infinite enemies that way, so I didn't include stuff like that. Next is FE10, Radiant Dawn with 1467 enemies. FE10 is a very long game. It has 42 main story maps, which is, I think, the most main story maps out of any Fire Emblem game. And FE10, some of the late maps are just loaded with enemies. 3 Endgame has 84 initial enemies. And that's getting into like the territory that like an entire map in FE4 would have. 312 has 76 initial enemies. That's the one where I think you're with the Dawn Brigade and you're on top of that cliff and you're like fighting uh, Sonicky and Seagrin's army. Next is FE16 with 1835 enemies. FE16 also kind of works in different ways than the standard Fire Emblem game. Since it has four routes, um, I had to kind of figure out some way to kind of meet a middle ground. So for FE16, I just included all of part one, although I did include the differences between chapter 12 of Crimson Flower compared to chapter 12 of the other three routes. Then when we get to the part twos, um, the, par the thing that FE16 has a problem with is that it has a, a lot of just copy paste maps between some of the routes. All the chapters in Crimson Flower are unique, so I included all of them. Then what I did is include all of the route, all the chapters for Silver Snow. Then when we get to Azure Moon, up until chapter 17 are all copy paste maps from Silver Snow. But then seven chapters 17 through 22 are all unique in their enemy placements. Then though, once we get to Verdant Wind, Verdant Wind shares all of its maps with either Silver Snow or Azure Moon except for the very final chapter. Chapter 22 is at least unique to Verdant Wind. Otherwise, Verdant Wind is just copy pasting Silver Snow. FE16 does have 23 paralogs that I included all of them. Then at number one is FE14 Fates with 2,510 enemies. So for Fates, I just decided to include all three routes all together, all as fates as a whole. So for fates, there are a total of 22 paralogs that are all unique. I only counted the prologue through chapter six one time. And then each route has 23 unique chapters. Although some of the maps are reused between the games, the enemy uh, layouts are at least different. And they're not like a copy paste like with three houses because of the way you the maps are reused, like some of the maps, like just for example, the Wind Tribe map that you see in Conquest was reused for Revelation. However, like as that map is like late game in Conquest, it's early game in Revelation, so like the enemies are completely different. So with all that said, that is the video. If you enjoyed it, like, comment, subscribe, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.